Welcome to the first of two video tutorials about MaxMaps. MaxMaps is a visualization tool for the graphical representation of qualitative data and its interrelationships. In MaxMaps, documents, memos, codes, summaries, or coded text or image segments can be freely arranged on a multi-dimensional workspace and supplemented with additional graphical elements or images. Since the map is always interactively linked to the original data in your project, you can use the map not only for visualizing and analyzing relationships, but also as a graphical gateway to your research. In this video tutorial, you'll learn all about the essential tools that you need to create a map of your own. In the second tutorial, we'll then look at the MaxMaps model templates, which allow you to create a more specialized visualization of certain aspects of your data. You can open MaxMaps via MaxQDA's Visual Tools menu. When you click on the button, the MaxMaps interface will open. This interface is divided into three parts. On the left, you can see the list of your existing maps. The big window on the right is the workspace where you can create and edit a map. And in the upper menu, you can switch between the Start and Insert tabs. Now let's start by creating a new map. To do this, click on the button New Map. The map will then be inserted in the list on the left, and here you can give the map its own name. Using drag and drop, you can now insert elements from your project into the map, such as documents and document groups, memos, codes, and coded segments. If you've already selected codes and documents by activating them, you can right-click on the map to add them all at once, using the context menu. You can then freely arrange the objects on the map by clicking and moving them around. And in addition to elements from your project, like codes, memos, and documents, you can also insert free objects like circles, text fields, or images. Because your map is interactively linked to your project, you can now import additional data. By right-clicking on a code, for example, you can import the code memo, linked memos, coded segments, or the subcodes belonging to that code. You can also import all the other codes that were assigned in conjunction with that code. Here, and in many other places, you have further design options. For example, you can decide whether the connecting lines between codes should be drawn thicker or thinner to reflect the frequency of their common occurrence. You can customize the objects in MaxMaps as you wish. To change the size of an object, for example, just drag it by its squares here. Or to rotate it, click this point at the top of the object and then turn it. If you hold down the Shift key at the same time, the rotation is no longer free, but locks in place at specific angles. When you click on one or more objects in the map, the Format tab automatically appears in the menu. Here you can change the size, the color, shadows, fonts, or the symbol type. The Format tab is divided into three sections – Label, Symbol, and Object. The label is the name or title of the object. The symbol is the displayed image. And the object is the symbol and the label as a unit. You can also customize the labels of single objects on your map by right-clicking on the respective object and selecting Edit Label. The codes and documents in the project are protected against changes in the map. So if you change the name of a code in the map, the original name in the project will remain the same. Once you're happy with the arrangement of the objects on your map, you can now define how the relationships between them should be displayed. For this, you need to switch to the Link mode up here. If you now click on an element, keep the mouse pressed, and then drag the line to another element, you can create connecting lines. 
By clicking on one or more of these lines, the tab Line Format will open, where you can change the display of the linking line. So you can change the colour and thickness of the line and determine whether it should be displayed as a solid or dashed line. And you can also add arrow ends to the lines and define whether they should be straight or curved. You can also add labels to these connecting lines. With a right click and the option here, a text field appears in which you can, for example, describe the type of relationship between the objects. As I've already mentioned, the elements that you've imported into your map are interactively linked to your MaxQDA project. If you click on one of the objects, for example, MaxQDA will automatically jump to the corresponding document in the document browser. This is especially useful when you're working with two screens. Also, when you move your cursor over a memo, a preview of that memo is displayed. And by double-clicking on a code, you can display a list of all the segments coded with that code. From this list, you can then drag the coded segments onto the map, and then, if you want, you can insert the coded text or images as labels for these coded segments. A finished map can then be exported in several ways. For example, to use in a publication or presentation. By clicking on the camera symbol, you can save a screenshot of the map to the clipboard. And you can then use the Paste option to copy it into a Word document. With the Export icon, you can also export your map in different file formats, for example as a PNG image or as a high-resolution vector graphic. And that's it! Now you know all the basics for working with Max Maps. Don't forget to check out our second video on the Max Maps model templates. Until then, we wish you all the very best with your project.